Welcome, 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 and thank you for tuning in to the 3D Property Solutions Podcast, bringing you the latest in real estate news, trends, and events. Here's your host, Dean. Dean, what are we talking about today? Hey, Dean Gazowski here, 3D Property Solutions. I'm analyzing a deal right now just behind me. I apologize for the glare off the whiteboard, but it's what I got to deal with right now. But the concept of the deal remains the same. Let's run through it real quick. I've got a house in Taylor. It's about 1,800 square foot. It's three bedrooms, bath and a half. It's on a slab. It's got a garage, okay? That's what's got going for it. Now, the seller wants her absolute best price is $175,000. I've got an after repair value that I've verified between $200,000 and $220,000. Now, this kind of seems like a retail deal right now, right? So if I have a $200,000 value on the property, that's what it's going to sell for on the open market. I've got $16,000 in closing costs if I'm going to pay 3% to the buyer's agent, 3% to the selling agent, then 2% for your transfer taxes and your title work, all your fees, you know? so gonna net me if I sell it at that 186 so I've only got a little bit of markup there that doesn't make it a good flip because there's no markup there okay here's what we could do okay rather than buying this house cash which is the hammer the one trick hammer pony or whatever you want to call it 175 cash deals out the window how about we go ahead and take over the existing mortgage well I was able to ask the question I said listen what what's your monthly payment Okay, because the only number, and I told her about this over the phone, I said, any of these wholesalers, any of these investors that are out there right now are not going to be able to come through and give you 175 cash. Best case scenario, 200 ARV, they're going to come in, they're going to want to make a couple bucks, you know, 70% of the 200,000 is 140, right? And then whatever repairs, if they're going to go through, repaint the house, you know, you see what I'm saying. So they're going to come through with the 120,000, $110,000 offer and that was a soft touch on her because like as I'm going through the conversation, I'm establishing expectation. I'm telling her the way it's going to go. You invite anybody else other than me to this house and they're going to come through and insult you with a $110,000 offer. And I said, Mrs. Seller, what's your response to that? Well, no, heck no. That's no, I can't, there's no way I can do that. Okay. I said, great. That's what I thought you would say. So let's go this route. The only way I'd be able to buy that house, even be able to consider it in my world at $175,000 is if we were able to go the route of treating you, Mrs. Seller, like the bank, which means this, I give you down payment money to take over that existing mortgage. I make those payments as agreed by, you know, the contract that you have with the bank and I'll capitalize on this. 4.75% interest rate. Okay. So think of that. Okay. That's what we got going on here. Then I'm looking at a little bit of a bump, you know, for taxes because this is homestead property, which means that the seller is living there right now. And if I go in, you know, I put, turn it into rental property, the city is going to charge me an extra 30% in tax. So that's going to probably bump to 1100 bucks a month, 11 and change. And then I got to know what's the fair market rent. Okay, assuming that the house is turnkey, I don't have to make any repairs, and I'm going to be twelve hundred bucks all in on that. Maybe I can rent it for twelve hundred bucks. Maybe. I mean, I don't think really a dollar per square foot is going to apply here because, you know, it's just. I mean, even though it's a desirable area, you know, eighteen hundred bucks for a three bedroom. We like to be conservative and look at our fair market rents, and you can find that rate over at. Uh, uh, huduser.gov you can find that web website with uh, fair market rents and you know pace off and uh, figure out where your uh, you know what your number should be so what i'm saying is about 14 to 1450 a month on your three bedroom rental here in taylor does it make sense to pick up a property that's 200 bucks a month no maybe i don't know we can see but Another thing to look at is how do you find ways to increase your rental rate, your monthly rental rate? Do you go short-term rentals? Do you want to add that extra management into your life? Or uh, do you go with uh, renting to a group home? This is this place where, from what I can see with the pictures, it's got a big wide open floor plan. Maybe we do a like wheelchair accessible type of a house. I don't know, group home, rent it to a group home, charge them 1500 bucks a month and then you know, life's good. 
What are the options here? But one thing for sure, as, as an investor, you know, you see in a property like this, this is the majority of the investors out there are gonna pass on something like that because, or they're gonna come through with a $110,000 offer because they're not educated on doing subject to deals or taking over existing financing. So uh, and my question to you uh, folks that have stuck around five minutes in the video is how would you do this deal? I mean, assuming that you're gonna go after the subject to route and uh, give the seller a you know down payment to get out of Dodge, and then you take over the existing payments, do you see anything else that we could do with this deal? Who would you rent to? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the 3D Property Solutions Podcast. How would you handle that deal? We would love to know. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you know anyone who loves real estate just as much as we do, tell them about our channel. We will love to have them on.